So what is the assertion of the null hypothesis implies? Basically what it means is that uh, each of the three groups that we have actually have the same underlying distributions. Okay, so the, the, the means of the three groups are equal. That basically means that we have um, three distributions here, you know, maybe a red distribution, a yellow distribution. It can be, it can be slightly, uh, it can be a different distribution so long as it has the same mean. And maybe we have here like a green distribution, okay, which also has a mean at the same place. We're going to we're going to call this central value of the three means the grand mean or the total mean. So mu capital T for total. It just implies that the three groups have the same mean. The assertion of the null hypothesis is that at least one of those means from one distribution is different to the others. So here's one example where uh, if mu1 doesn't equal mu2 and also those two are different to mu3, then we're going to have three distributions all with separate means. So when we're dealing with, with samples, how can we use the sample means of the three distributions to determine which of those two cases is correct? Is it more likely that the alternative hypothesis is correct? Or is it more likely that the null hypothesis is correct? Well, if we plot the three sample distributions with their means, we can look at the differences between their means and calculate them. And if there's a lot of difference between the means, um, then we, you know, then it's more likely the case that we're dealing with the alternative hypothesis, that there's a lot of difference, that the three means are different. So over here, we've got two cases. The top case is where the three distributions are quite well aligned, not perfectly aligned, but the differences between the means are quite small. So we have small differences here. And down here, we have much larger differences. So when we have samples like this case down below, then this is going to be more likely to cause us to reject the null hypothesis. And why am I talking, why am I talking about sampling error here? So I say differences are small and likely caused by sampling error. Well, if the null hypothesis is true, so if we have the case over here where the three samples all have the same mean in the population, it's still possible that when we go out and take our three samples and calculate our sample means, x1 bar, x2 bar, and x3 bar, because of sampling error, because of the fact that we're not sampling the entire population but we've selected a subset to sample, there's a case that the mean that we calculate in our sample is slightly different to the population mean, just due to sampling error alone. And the same is true for the other two samples these could be slightly off from what the true means are. So in the end, when we plot our three sample distributions and plot the three means, even if their population means are equal, it's still possible that we're going to see some small differences. And if these differences are small enough, then it's safe to assume that those differences are just caused by sampling error, and then we don't reject. But if the differences are large, then if they become too large, then it becomes unlikely that those differences are caused by sampling error. It becomes more likely that the null hypothesis is wrong, and it becomes more likely that the alternative hypothesis is true, that the three population means are in fact different.